In this tutorial, we will learn how to create a realistic planet, like what we see right now on the screen. So, we need to start with a sphere. Let us first delete this default cube and add one UV sphere from the Add menu. This will be the planet we will design, so we can rename it to Planet. Let us also change the light. Go to the Light tab, change it to a Sun type, and reduce the Strength value to 3. Now, we need a planet texture to apply on our planet. You can search for any planet texture in the internet, and download one that you like. We have already downloaded one such picture, and saved it on our desktop. So, back to Blender. Before we apply the texture, we need to prepare this sphere. Our texture is a rectangular image which we will apply on this spherical object. As a result, the polar sections will get squeezed and will look very odd. In order to rectify it, go to the Edit mode. Then deselect everything and select the single vertex right at the pole. Delete this vertex from Mesh, then Delete, then Vertices. Now, turn on the Edge Selection mode, and select any one edge from this polar circle. Then go to the Select menu, Select Loops, Edge Loops. Now we will push this circle towards the pole. So press E on your keyboard for Extrude, then S for Resize, and either you can move your mouse to reduce its size to almost zero, or just type .01, and hit Enter. Now this polar section is ready for the UV unwrap process, but the sphere has got somewhat flat at the pole. So, go to a front view, and while the polar edge loop is still selected, press G on your keyboard to grab or move, then press Z to lock the movement on the Z-axis, and move the mouse slightly, to give it a curved shape. We have to do the same for the other pole as well. I hope you are familiar with this editing, and the UV unwrap process. UV unwrap is necessary to apply the texture to our planet. If you are new to UV unwrap, you can watch my tutorial just on the UV unwrapping for a sphere. The link is in the video description. So, we are done with both the poles. Now, select everything by pressing A on your keyboard, then go to UV, and then unwrap. And once again, go to UV, and select sphere projection. Then open this operator box. In the direction, select a line to object, and check both the options clip to bounds and scale to bounds. We can close this. Finally, we are now ready to open the UV editor. Press A to select everything and verify the map. We can see, there is a problem in this area, also here, and also on the horizontal length. So deselect everything. Turn on the face selection mode, and disable the shared location from here. Then select all the faces on top two rows, press G for grab and X on your keyboard. Then move your mouse to position the selected faces correctly on the UV map. You may need to try a few times to do it perfectly. Okay. Now in the same way, select the bottom row, press G and X on your keyboard, and move it towards the left to position it along with all the other rows. Once this is done, select everything again, then press S on your keyboard to scale, and then X to lock the transformation only in the X axis, and then move your mouse slightly to cover the gap. Finally, press G on your keyboard to grab, then press X, and move it slightly towards the right for a perfect placement on the UV map. We are done. To project the planet texture here, click on this open button, go to the location where you have downloaded the planet texture, select it, and click on open. Then zoom out and verify that the texture is now perfectly projected to the UV map of the sphere. We are done with the UV mapping, so go back to the 3D viewport, and then also go back to the object mode. To see the texture effect on the planet, go to the Materials tab. Add a new material, and change the shader type to Diffused BSDF. Then click on this little yellow icon beside the base color. Select Image Texture. Open this drop-down and select the texture we created in the UV Editor. After that, turn on the Rendered View Mode. We can now see the texture perfectly projected on our planet. But the sphere is not quite smooth, we can see these flat faces. So go to the Modifiers tab. Add a Subdivision Surface Modifier, and increase the levels to 3. Then apply this modifier. Now it looks better. We can do two more things. First go to the World tab, and change the environment color to complete black. 
Then, go to the Render Properties and turn on the Bloom option. Although the planet now looks okay, it also looks dull, and just flat. We will add a bump factor for the highlighted areas, compared to the dark areas, to bring more life into it. Then we will also create an environment layer for this planet. So, split the screen here, just little more to this side, and then open a shader editor on the left side. We can close this section. We have three nodes here created when we first added the material. We will add the bump node in between this diffuse BSDF and this image texture node. So, go to add, then vector, and add a bump node. Join the color output of the image texture to the height input and normal to normal. Then change the strength value to 0.2. We can see a nice effect on our planet, and it has magically changed its look. We will now remove the bump from the dark areas in order to bring out the highlighted areas far better. So, go to Add, then Converter, and add a Color Ramp node. Place it in between the image texture and the bump node. Now, move this small handle on the left. Look at this section of the planet to see the effect of this node. As we move this handle, the dark areas become flat, and it gives a nicer look to the overall texture of the planet. We can fix it somewhere around this level. Okay. We have our planet ready. But we will now add an atmosphere for this planet, for a better look. So, add one more UV sphere from the Add menu. Resize it little bit bigger than the planet, by 1.01. Then, to make it smooth, go to the Modifiers tab, and add a Subdivision Surface Modifier. Just like before, increase these levels to 3, and apply the modifier. This sphere will be our atmosphere, so we can rename it to Atmosphere. But, we will apply blur and glare effects on this sphere. Hence, we need to move it to a different layer. So add a new collection, and move the atmosphere to this new collection. Move the camera and the light outside their collection as they will be common to both the layers. On this particular layer, only the planet will be visible, so hide this collection too. Now copy this layer and create a new layer. Rename it to say, Atmosphere. Only the atmosphere should stay on this layer, so hide the collection one. Now, select the atmosphere and go to the Materials tab. Create a new material for our atmosphere, and change the shader type to Diffuse BSDF. Let us do the rest of the work, here in the shader editor. So enlarge it a bit. Let us make some room for the other nodes to be added here. Change this color to something similar to the primary color of our planet, but on a lighter shade. This will form the atmosphere around the planet. So, we can take something in the dark yellow or in the orange region. Fine. The atmosphere should be thicker towards the horizon, and very thin in the middle. To do that, we need to mix it with a transparent color. So add a transparent shader from the Add menu. And to do the actual mix, add a mix shader. Now, connect them to the mix shader. Transparent shader should go to the top and the color node should go to the bottom. Then, add a layer weight node to control the percentage of their mix. Change the blend value to 0.25. Add the facing output to the FAC input of the mix shader. We don't see any change yet, but no worry. Go to the Properties tab, and change the blend mode to Alpha Blend. And also check this backface culling option. Now, the transparent effect is very much visible for our atmosphere. This color, I think we should change it a bit, although not a very important factor, but this looks better. Anyway, we are now done with the shader editor, so we can close this section. Now, we need the final step to combine these two layers together. So, let us open the compositor here. We can close this panel. Then, turn on this Use Nodes option. We have two nodes by default. Let us move them aside so that we can add some more nodes here. First to add is another Render Layer node. Select the Atmosphere layer for this node. We already have the Planet layer in the first Render Layer node. Now, add a Blur node from the Filter menu to convert the Atmosphere level to more realistic one. Change it to Fast Gaussian Type. Increase the X and Y values to say, 40. 
and connect the atmosphere layer to this blur node. Then press Shift D to duplicate this node and here, use little higher values, maybe 50. Bring the atmosphere layer to its input. We are done with the blur. Now add a glare node similarly from the filter menu. Change it to a fog glow. And connect the first blur node here. Then press Shift D to duplicate it, and change it to low so that we have two different glare mix. Connect the second blur node here. To add these two nodes, add one mix node from the color menu. Change it to add type. Then connect the original render layer, and this glare node to this. Change the FAC value to 0.8. Now duplicate it, and connect this node with the other glare node. Then, we have to join the two render layers. So, add an alpha over node from the color menu. Bring the view layer to one input, and the final add node here to the second input. Change the FAC value to 0.5. Finally, connect its output to the composite. So, we are done with the node setup. We can now check out the final result. For that, go to the render menu, and select render image. Here is our planet, with the atmospheric effect. You can add a star background to it for more stunning look. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.